Hello and welcome to the fourth video in the Conformist series. Uh, today we're going to start conforming our music video project. Uh, so we have our scene set up and it's ready to go. I'm going to quickly give you a rundown of the settings we used. So our working format is HD. If we go into our scene settings, you can see that um, our working color space is Asus AP1. Um, our DRT is set to an Asus RRT 1.0.1 and we've set my image container to my hard drive. Um, a reminder, if you do want to go ahead and follow along with this tutorial, um, go ahead and check out the YouTube description and you should be able to download the conform materials and the media that you need to do this conform. So the first step is to import our offline reference. So to import the offline, we're going to go to our Flux Manage tool. We're going to go along to the conform materials folder. And you can see here we've got an EDL and a QuickTime. So we're going to go ahead and import this QuickTime. Again, so I, I did change the scene container to point towards my hard drive, but evidently didn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and change the container to look at the hard drive. And I'm going to close Flux Manage. Cool. So as you can see, if I scrub along here, we've successfully imported our offline reference. And it has our file name and our source timecode burn in, as well as the record timecode. Now this is a counter that is showing, if I go into my cursor view, um, you can see that show counters is enabled. If I hit this counter menu, you can see all of the stuff that you can have embedded onto your counter. So for now, I'm just gonna untick this, perfect. Um, we're also just gonna check now that we've imported it, that it's coming in the correct format and the correct color space. So it's an HD file, it's been tagged from the metadata of the file as being Rec 709, which is what it is. All good. So let's get into some housekeeping. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rename it. So if I drag out my parameters view, you can start to see the name field up here. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the file path and just leave the name. I always like to delete the extension because it looks tidy. Um, cool. So here's our file. It's been renamed in the timeline. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to change the color. Um, this is quite important so that you don't accidentally start grading your reference file at any point. I always like to keep a clear color, uh, red, uh, to keep it nice and obvious that this is not to be graded. This is just reference. So our offline is prepped. It's good to go. The next step is our EDL. So if we go ahead to our views tab and hit EDL import, uh, the hotkey for that is control E. Looking at our file name, this is where we select our EDL and it should be available to you in the conform materials folder. So hit OK. Once we select the EDL, the EDL import dialog box will come to life. Um, you can see that we have some conform settings here and we have all of the events in the EDL. So we have our tape name here, uh, the source time code that the clip should be and its point in the timeline, okay? So uh, there's lots of info here. So breaking it down from the top, this media tab is where you select your directory that the EDL will look towards. Um, you can actually add up to seven um, directories um, to reference an EDL. Um, so that's uh, really nice, but all of the media for this conform is in one location. So if we go ahead to the media folder, go ahead and hit OK. So we've got the EDL and we're pointing towards a certain location. Um, let's dig into some of these options. So the first one, the range type, the range type is asking whether we're working with source or record time code. As you can see down here, we have source time code for these clips. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. The time code location option is asking if the time code's located in the metadata of the file, the header of the file, or um, whether we want to set a specific frame number to represent a certain time code. The time code is located in the header and the metadata. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. Frame rate, nice and easy, 25 FPS. Um, now, Overwrite tape name. If we go down a couple of steps, you can see that there's a match events by option. And we're gonna go ahead and select tape name and path or file name. It's gonna try and match the events in the EDL using this tape name. So if we go ahead and view our browser and go into our media folder, you can see that our file name is these 12 characters here. So if we exit out of this flux manage, you can see the tape name here has an additional character. It's got this underscore. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to edit this tape name to just have the first 12 characters. So there's this clever option, overwrite tape name. And we're going to go ahead and go, we're going to overwrite the tape name with the clip name. 
the clip name is over here. Uh, as you can see, it has uh, 16 characters. It's got the additional four characters here at the end. But what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite the tape name using only the first 12 characters of the clip name. So what this will do is it will replace the tape name with the first 12 characters of the clip name. And then we're going to be trying to match that new tape name with the files that we have in our folder. So um, it's a little bit confusing, but um, just know that we are going to overwrite this tape name with the first 12 characters of the clip name. And then we're going to go ahead and try and match these events in the EDL using that 12 character tape name. Great. So moving down, we have sequence versioning, which you can not worry about for now. We're going to name the strips uh, with this new tape name. So we're going to leave that as it is. And um, that's all we're going to look at for now. So this should work. We're going to go ahead and hit uh, start conform. Before we do though, um, it's really important that you match your cursor. So if I go ahead and close this menu, match your cursor with the first event in the EDL. So going back up to our EDL screen, um, and you can see that everything stayed as we had it set. The first event in our EDL is set at one hour, and our cursor is at the first frame of picture. So that's really important to line up. Cool, so we're gonna go ahead and hit start conform. Cool, so we've got 80% of this conform complete. That's a pretty good number. If we scroll down, we can see that um, this uh, blank, this dissolve hasn't come through. That's fine, we can fix that. Um, and you can see that everything else, except for a couple of clips here, they don't appear to have come across. So, that's cool, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. That completes the EDL import, and I'm gonna close the menu here. So, if we scroll across here, you can see that we have media. Uh, media has come through. I'm gonna shift middle mouse button to jump back to the middle of this clip, and I'm gonna command middle mouse button and drag to zoom my way in. Offline clip here. At the moment, my cursor is looking at the bottom of the stack. Okay, if I hit the up arrow, I can lift my cursor above certain layers and only view those layers. So as you can see, if I lift my cursor up to this clip, uh, this clip has actually come in fine. It's just the blank that hasn't come through that's causing this offline. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and delete it. Um, now, obviously, this dissolve uh, will be dissolving between my online clip and my offline. You can see that that's not what we want. So I'm going to go ahead, click my clip, and I'm going to insert a new blank color strip. Okay. So because I have my blank strip selected, my parameters view has changed, and I can um, go ahead and change this blank strip here. I'm going to change it all the way to black. If I drag my cursor to the start and scrub through, you can see the dissolve is doing the opposite of what I want it to do. If I, if I tab up to just view the offline and scroll through, you can see it fades up from black. Okay, so tabbing down, you can see at the moment, if hitting play, that it's fading down. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click the dissolve strip in the parameters view. You can see that we've got these toggles here. I'm going to go ahead, bring my end alpha down, my start alpha up and you can see that um, it is now fading up from black which is what we want just before we leave the section i'm just going to lasso these two clips and hit alt down arrow to move my strips down okay so we're nearly um reaching the end of the first part of this video so just before we go um you can see that there's this gap in the timeline it looks like this clip just extends it just keeps on going um so what we're gonna to do to test this out is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna drag out this clip to fill this gap. To do this, we're gonna go up to the uh, edit menu. We're gonna hit our edit type and hit overlap. You can see that we now have three sliders. What we can do is we can uh, make sure with this end slider selected, we can just click and drag and drag this clip out, okay? Now, instead of trying to line this up, um, getting it wrong, I'm just gonna go ahead and let go, hit command Z, Okay, go ahead and select this again. Um, there is an easier way to do it. What we're going to do is we're going to um, align our cursor with the first frame of the subsequent clip. So I'm going to tab across with X. X going forward, Z going backwards. I'm going to line this up here. And with my end slider selected, so not the middle, not the start, with the end, 
I'm going to drag out my parameters view. And you can see that this point in the timeline is 3 seconds and 14 frames. With this clip selected, you can see the starting time code of that clip and the end. So it ends 2 seconds in. I can actually change this on the fly. So I'm going to change this to 0314. And I'm going to hit enter. And as you can see, with this end slider selected, I actually changed the end point of this clip to align with cursor, which is nice and accurate. No fiddling around, you know, dragging things in and out like that. Can that control Z? Okay, um, to exit this mode, I'm gonna go to edit, and I'm gonna go none. Okay, and uh, there we go. We've uh, successfully dragged out our clip. So uh, command middle mouse dragging out. Just to satisfy my OCD just before we end, I'm just gonna lasso all of these clips and I'm gonna hit Alt, up arrow, uh, just so all my media strips are in one line. Cool, so that's a good point to leave it. We've successfully imported an EDL and we have a timeline with no gaps. As you can see, the image isn't looking that flash, it's looking very flat. Um, and the biggest part of any conform, we need to sync check what we've got in the timeline against the offline reference that's been provided to us. We will uh, uh, delve into the second half of the conform in part two. Hope that was helpful, I'll see you soon.